But I was born in um, Omuamaku, in Orumba, and then I uh, started my primary school in uh, Ubuntu Jebe. Eventually ended up uh, in my village where I completed my primary school and my secondary school before moving into the university. And the rest they say is history. But I will say, in summary, I consider myself um, a child of grace, a man of excellence, and a man in pursuit of how to touch life, especially among the youths and women, a man who is looking to see how we can make this world a better place, better than we have met it. Uh, someone who has imbibed the culture of continuous improvement, which is about improving the status quo. And uh, finally, somebody who is looking to change the fortunes of an Anambra state. As a matter of fact, when I reflect back about my upbringing, I can only be thank God. Uh, even though at the time we were growing up, uh, we thought we were the uh, most, um, you know, um, who you can say um, abandoned uh, the most. Uh, we were part to 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 be like one of those rich kids around the neighborhood. We were part to. Um, have the opportunity to even um, enter some homes and shake hands with some, uh, you know, bourgeois around. But uh, not, not knowing sometimes, um, the reality of life is um, life always will present you an opportunity and what we call challenges. But it depends on how we are able to make um, lemonade out of the lemon. And so growing up, being the last child of... Um, the village headmaster. My father, Nze uh, Andrew Zubo, and my mother, uh, Cristiano Zubo, both um, alive today by the special grace of God, 91 and 85 years, been married for 64 years. But they started from a very humble beginning, and my father being a headmaster and a cut case, a village cut case, uh, whatever uh, in the village he was transferred to, we would move from one village to another. So. I'm sure he lived in over over 15 villages in his own lifetime, and uh, my own siblings, the um, elderly ones, uh, were born in different locations from where I was born. I was born in Omomak. I was the only one born in Omomak. Um, my immediate elder ones were born in Umogem Ufuma. These are different remote villages within the neighborhood. But um, I'm happy that um, I come from Ozibo family. Uh, he's got a lot of uh, prestige behind that name. So in all of this, a few things I learned in life: discipline, hard working, self control, you know, mastery of self, and uh, these came to bear as I grew up. Uh, from primary school, I was uh, one of the best students. Of course, being a student in a school where your father is a teacher, um, a head teacher for that matter. You can only but behave yourself because um, at those days, if you, for one reason, would make a mistake, you'll be punished double or doubly. Uh, and the reason for, for this is um, you would always want to set an example with his own child. And you don't want to be that example. And, <laughs> and uh, so that infused a lot of discipline in me growing up. And to be honest, if I have become anything else, including what they call global citizen, it is actually based on this backgrounding. And uh, because I moved from being one of the best in primary school to being one of the best also in the secondary school. In fact, I presented the school in a quiz competition. I used to be called a mathematician in secondary school. And in fact, just as I finished uh, my secondary school, uh, waiting for admission uh, at the University of Nigeria, I was asked to use the intervening period to teach. And, I, and so I taught uh, physics and maths. And um, I must say uh, that even helped too you know, boost my confidence level. So uh, when I then went into the University of Nigeria, I studied accountancy, and then I met the best results both in the department and in the faculty. And so you could see a lot of what I said already manifesting. Um, a person of excellence, somebody who we always want to leave this 
life better than we've met it. I always I had a mantra in growing up, making sure you leave whoever you meet with a positive impression. Uh, people usually will say, you can live your life, you don't care what other people say about that's That's not correct. You live your life mindful of what your environment is saying about you because that will help you in shaping your character, your habit, your reputation for, for good. So, of course, you don't live your life for others, but live your life knowing there are others because a lot of times we must learn that where our rights, you know, end, others begin. So, I learned this early in life and therefore I learned the rudiments of emotional intelligence and that has helped me tremendously. So from secondary school to university, I eventually did my MBA at the same University of Nigeria. Eventually I went to England on scholarship to have my second master's in finance and eventually also undertook a number of other program, professional programs, including global CEO program, which was done in three universities in the world and for which I was elected the president of the class. And then I spent 17 years in the banking industry altogether. I uh, started from Namachan back to Diamond Bank to FSB to UBA to Bank PHP. And I got to a level of uh, general manager position, but there are a few landmarks that I hit as a banker. Uh, within the first year of working in Diamond Bank, I became the best staff uh, because the worried branch where I was uh, became the best branch of the bank and I became the best staff of the branch and that's how I became the best staff of Diamond Bank. And eventually, uh, my trajectory continued to go like that. Um, again, a child of grace. And guess what? I was always being headhunted from one, for one role or another. And um, I touched, um, in fact, my being a global player started from the banking days because in my first 30 years, I hadn't left Nigeria. In fact, I didn't have any international passport. First 30 years. And so if I actually call myself a village boy, you can understand the, the, the true meaning. But guess what? When I gained the scholarship to do my master's in England, that was the first time. And this was um, an amazing experience. Guess what? Because I was never um, one of those who could pee up at the embassy to look for visa. We gained a scholarship. I was invited. My wife and my little boy, three months old, and that's how we gained the visa, the student visa. And then I went to England, and from there I moved to the U.S. And coming back to Nigeria, I took up a, an international role in banking. I was head of international banking, head of offshore liaison, head of embassies and multilaterals, and that started taking me around the globe. Uh, at some point, I would travel to about 15 countries a single year, and then when I became head of you know, international banking, I started expanding banks in different countries of the world. I would go to a foreign country, meet with the president sometimes, or the finance minister or central bank governor, would we'll negotiate you know, banking licensing and go through the normal process, we'll do the feasibility study, and gain um, the uh, document, all the processes, and eventually I secure the approval, move to secure the, the premises, and I set up the office operationalize it, appoint the CEOs and other management staff, you move from one country to another. And it was a lot of fun because you became a total banker. Everything in banking you, was in your head, but you were able to defend what you're coming to do in a foreign country. So I became an entrepreneur uh, in banking and that was indeed amazing. At some point, I became a teacher in banking. I taught over 1,500 bankers in Nigeria. So I got to a German in I felt anywhere there's um, nothing more to do in banking and eventually an opportunity came again I was called on phone one day for an interview uh, to, uh, to to be interviewed for a position in Transcop and that's how I became the MD CEO of Transcop Hotels PLC which I did for seven years and um, broke a number of records and uh, global records for that matter I was the CEO of the year in 2016 uh, was 30 man of the year in 2019 in different countries, Greece and Athens. And the hotel itself uh, became the best business hotel in Africa. And uh, I mean, you, you all have experienced Transcap Hilton to see that indeed uh, is the best we have in Nigeria and, and Africa. So this has been my journey. I became the president of Transcap Group. But forget about the, the educational and the corporate. There are a lot of other things that define me. Um, I started to think about how to 
improve the environment that groomed me, touch the life that actually where I was formed. So I have done a lot of things in the village. I have done a lot of youth empowerment, women empowerment, scholarship uh, given, and talent hunt, um, business plan competition, carnivals. Um, in some cases, about 10,000 youth will gather for, for free and entertain them, them and you know, put the right message. See what they can learn that can improve their life, irrespective of what they do, whether you're a student, whether you're working, whether you're jobless, whether you're in trading, and in some cases, see which lives we can touch. So, uh, this, this is just you know, summarizing my entire story. And I've also been involved in a number of other activities. I was um, I still, in fact, today uh, in Africa, I'm considered the biggest promoter of freestyle football. Uh, because in 2017, we started a company called Feet and Tricks, which I'm still the chairman uh, up to today. And through this medium, we have again touched a number of lives. We've had to send some people within Nigeria and outside of uh, within Africa to uh, Europe, to US, to represent the continent in a global competition. And, and there's a lot more we can do with this platform. And I'm happy that a lot of what I touch in life actually do succeed. And that can only be because of the grace of God and you know when I look back I actually see enough reason to want to say to God thank you and one of those ways is to see how can I leverage the opportunity we have in a number of states to say thank you to God.